Number three, uh, 60 Minutes, about 30 years behind the times, apparently ran a segment this weekend talking about some of the issues with Title IX. And uh, here it is. Listen to this. Minnesota insists that financial pressure isn't the only reason sports are being dropped. It also cites Title IX, the federal law that requires schools to match the gender makeup of their student bodies in their sports teams. So if 54% of students are women, 54% of athletes should be too. To get to that balance, schools often choose to cut men's sports rather than create new ones for women. Title IX is often the scapegoat when universities cut teams. Again, it's to protect the core business, which is football, but you can kind of use this gender justice shield to um, kind of throw men's non-revenue sports under the bus. Football is often what gets universities in trouble with Title IX in the first place. Minnesota has 115 men on its football roster, which means it needs 115 female athletes just to balance that single sport. Yeah, like I said, about 30 years behind the times, but it's glad they're finally catching on. Um, of course, this is a this is a total travesty. I mean, it's completely ridiculous. You have 150 men on a sport, means you have to have 150 women. Why? 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 Sh- who says who? Well, I know who says it, but why? What's the reason? I'll tell you the real reason why there aren't as many women playing sports. It's just because, and not as many people interested in, in women. Not as many women want to play sports. A lot more men want to play sports. Also, uh, men are better at playing sports, most sports anyway. And so it's more fun to watch them. You know, why do more people watch men's basketball over women's basketball? Because men are better at it. And so it's just a lot more fun to watch. It's a lot more fun to watch basketball where people can touch the rim. That's the reality. Yeah, it, it, it might hurt your feelings. It might not. I don't care. It's just, it's just, it's just a simple reality. This idea that everything has to be equal. You know, I raise my kids. I mean, this is something. And every parent, you go through this with my with my kids, um, especially the twins. That and, and all kids do this. They're, they're constantly insisting that everything has to be equal. Oh, he, you, you gave. He, he has uh, sixteen cheez its in his bowl that you gave him, and I only have thirteen. I need three more Cheez-Its. Well, with that, I'm impressed because that's good math. And then I might reward you for doing the math. But uh, in principle, the, the message from parents is not everything's going to be equal all the time. You got to get over it. You got to grow up. That's, that's not the way lo- life works. Sometimes someone gets a little more Cheez-Its than you do. That's life. Move on. So that, that's the message that, anyway, that competent parents or people who at least are trying to be competent parents, that's the message we give our kids. Then they go out into so- society and they're told, oh, no, no, everything has to be exactly the equal. You had 150 men playing a sport. You got to have 150 women. Equal- this idea of equality um, is one of the worst things that's happened to Western civilization. I'd put it that way. Equ- I'll tell you, equality exists really in two realms. Okay, Equality exists as a, as a sort of mathematical concept. You know, two plus two equals four, the same as. So we, we could talk about equality when we're talking about mathematical, uh, when, when, when we're in the realm of, of math. And then we can also talk about equality when we're talking about the inherent dignity and worth of human beings. And that's, and that's what's meant in our founding documents, when, a found, when, a, when our founding fathers talked about equality. That's what they meant, that all people have the same inherent worth. But that's it. As far as equality among people, that's as far as it goes. You have the same inherent worth as anybody else. There's no one out there who's more of a person than you. That's what is meant by it. So a really good example of what happens when people don't have equality, you have unborn babies who are killed a million a year, 60 million babies, just slaughtered and thrown into the the, uh, dumpster outback, the medical waste dumpster, or sold for parts by Planned Parenthood. That's what happens when we're not recognizing the inherent worth of a human being. And we're saying that, oh, well, they're, they're not like as people as we are. We're, we're a little bit more person than them. So when people don't have that kind of equality, that's very bad and horrible things happen all throughout history. But once we've established that, that's it. That's as far as equality goes. Men and women have the same uh, inherent worth and dignity. Great. 
that's that's it with equality. We could put equality on the shelf now. Once we've established that with men and women, we could put equality on the shelf. We've got that covered. There is no more equality. Men and women are not equal in any other sense except for that. And any attempt to make them equal in any sense except that really basic and, and really spiritual sense will, will, will lead to absurdities at best. Because the reality is, whether, you know, man, woman, whatever, you, you sitting there watching this, me sitting right here, you know, as, as for me, every single, per, every person in this building right now, they are either smarter than me or dumber than me. They're stronger, they're weaker. Like, it, it, it's, we, we are not equal in any way. For better or worse, from where I'm sitting, it's just the way it goes. You got to get used to it. Or apparently you don't have to get used to it. That's the problem. You know, this is the, 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 this message that we give kids all the time. We've got society working against us. Because we're always telling kids, oh, you know, you need to get out into the real world and you just got to deal with these things. But then the real world comes along and says, I don't know, they don't have to deal with it. We're, we're going to keep the delusion going. We want your kids to remain kids forever. Not in a good way, by the way, of like protecting their innocence. No, no, no. Because we're, we're going to make sure they see pornography at the age of eight. But uh, so you know, in that sense, we're going to take their innocence away from them. But in, sense, in the sense of their emotional maturity, well, you know, no, th- th- that we want them to be childlike forever. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.